Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach Team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, it's wonderful to have you tuned into the program today. We have some singing in store for you that I believe will bless your heart. And it's great to be able to come together in worship as we praise God for all of His blessings on us. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity today to come together with friends all around the world, to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for providing, Lord, this means to us to be able to share the good news of Christ. I pray that as the message goes out today, that if there's those that their heart is touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, that this will be the time that they'll understand you're there to help them. You are the one that rescues us. When we look to you and call out to you, you're there to help us in our time of need. Bless the singing today, I pray now. And Lord, again, honor us with your sweet presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Someday I'll stand in a wonderful place that's filled with love and marvelous grace with the cross laid down. Take his hand. When eternity I have only begun Now thank my Lord I'll thank my Lord for what he has done I'll thank my Lord I'll thank my Lord for bearing my sorrow When I reach that land When I reach that land of the unsaid son When I take his hand In the 
the garden he prayed And it was for me The answer was paid When he turned a tear I live only me Well, I hope you enjoyed the song today. Thank you for letting us know uh, when you enjoy certain songs, certain groups that we have on, and we do our best to try to rotate those songs, those groups in so that the program can be a blessing to you. It really means a lot. And I personally want to thank you for the prayers that you have been praying for my wife and I over the past few weeks as we've been battling with COVID. Like so many of you, we're no different than all of you, but we are thankful for God's healing and for the help that the Lord gives us. And we do thank you for your continued prayers. We know God is our healer. In the end, we need him more than we need anything. And we do appreciate as well your patience and prayers during these trying times with so many outbreaks of COVID in different areas. We've had to cancel a lot of our meetings or they have been canceled by the churches and the pastors that we normally go into. So anytime that we have, have an announcement, be sure to check before driving long distances uh, to be able to come together with us because we don't want to abuse your kindness. We thank you for loving us and supporting us and praying for us. And we do hope that we'll be able to worship together with you again soon when we come to your area. But thank you too for your special gifts of love during this time with so many meetings being canceled. That income is a tremendous help to this ministry. It helps us with a lot of missionary projects and special projects that we're involved in. So when we're unable to have those, we really feel the impact of that. But you have rallied to help and we thank you for that. And I know God will bless you for that. Let me tell you as well about this month's free gift offer. God has a secret. It's a message that I preached recently, and Brian also preached a message entitled Trapped, and we'll be glad to send these sermons to you free of charge on either CD or DVD, whichever you prefer. Just let us know when you contact us. Again, the gift offer is absolutely free. We'd love to hear from you this week. Our mailing address is 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, or you can call our office, 800-767-8711. One, three, or finally, visit us on the World Wide Web at calvinevans.org, and we'll be glad to get those right back to you in return mail. Well, I mentioned Brian's message. We're going to join that message just now. Psalm 107, um, I... I I'm actually not going to read a, just a text, but something that uh, is reoccurring, uh, starting in verse 6. It, it reoccurs several times in this psalm, but I kind of want to use that as a text, and then we'll, we'll go from there. The Bible says in Psalm 107, 6, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And you'll find it four different occasions that it mentions that same phrasing in Psalm 107. Psalm 107 is a wonderful psalm, specifically the first two verses, and that's what a lot of preachers like to preach on because it's all positive. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endureth forever. And here's one of their favorites, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And they like to stop right there because that's good stuff right there, isn't it? And that shows you who this psalm is written to. It's written to the redeemed. And so he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Thank you. I was waiting for some Bible readers there. Yeah, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So he tells us that we should speak up whenever we think about how good God has been to us. And when you think about how good he's been and all the blessings that has bestowed on you, friend, if you don't even know the Lord as your savior tonight, he has still been good to you. He has sure been good to you, but only those of us that are redeemed from the hand of the enemy can surely praise God like he rightfully deserves because we know what it means to be free. We know what it means to be enslaved in bondage when he came by and because of his precious blood, we're not redeemed, the Bible says, with silver or gold, but we're redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he says, say so. Say something about it when you think about being redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. As a lot of you know, I, I, I won't go into a lot of detail because it's, you know, you, don't, you really don't care about my past life, but you all know I don't like dogs very much. <laughs> Can we just say that? It's not that I don't like them, it's just I'm scared of them. And when I was really tiny, I got jumped on one. It was actually Nolan Dave Richards' dog. And uh, when we lived on Little Egypt, and a big Irish setter jumped on me, and I've been kind of scared of him ever since. Now, I will say this. I'm getting a lot better. We've got a dog now, and she's a little over a year old. Her name's Maggie, and uh, we, we love her. She still thinks she's a puppy, although she weighs about 60 pounds. And so uh, she, she's a pretty good dog. Uh, you know why? Because I don't mess with her. <laughs> and so it's my family's dog. But anyway, uh, we... She loves to jump. She loves to, you know, which is, I'm getting used to that. I'm really getting, I'm doing a lot better. I promise you that. But it's so funny because every time I come home, we have her out on the porch and we, we've got just this little like gate, uh, this little uh, barrier that we use and we put it on the openings of the porch and she can look over that. You know what? She could jump over it, but she thinks she's trapped. She don't know within herself that at any point in time, she could jump over that with no problem whatsoever. In fact, we don't even have it locked because she thinks once we put those barriers up, she thinks she's trapped and she can't get out. I wonder how many of you tonight feel like you're trapped by the enemy. Trapped trapped the rest of this psalm goes into detail about people that were trapped he says I want you to give thanks for the Lord his mercy endureth forever and he's redeemed us so let the redeemed of the Lord say so but then he goes into specific detail about what he did for people that were trapped four different kinds of people in this psalm I want you to notice tonight and how they were trapped and how God was able to deliver them. Verses four through eight tells us people that were trapped because of direction. They were looking for direction and they felt trapped. I don't know if you've ever in your life felt as though you were suffocating because you didn't know which way to go. Verse four says they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distress. He said there was a group of people that he's talking about that was wandering around they weren't wandering around with, with some great, in some great forest or in some great place where they could find refreshment. No, it was even worse than that. They were wandering around. They were lost, but they were wandering around lost in a deserted place. They were in solitary confinement, so to speak, out in the wide open because they were without direction. They did not know which way to go. And I don't know if you've ever been that way in your spiritual life tonight, but I have been there looking for direction, looking for a place to go, wondering, Lord, where do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Lord, I'm willing to go, but where do you want me to go? And I'm telling you what, sometimes we feel as though we are trapped because we don't know which direction the Lord wants for us. 
Sometimes we feel the, the, the trapped because the directions are this way. Maybe it's a direction we don't want to go. Or maybe it's a direction we hadn't thought about. Or maybe we're just waiting on answers and we haven't got them. And we're sitting there waiting on God. And maybe you've never felt that way before. But waiting on God, sometimes you feel trapped. Before service tonight, pastor myself and and some other preachers in my family, we went over to my mom and dad's. And my, my sister felt led to bring his pastors of the churches they attend and go anoint him. My dad hasn't been feeling well the last couple of weeks. And he continues to get worse. And, and we just don't know. Dad feels trapped because he don't know the answers. And dad, uh, you all know him, he's always had the answers. <laughs> Even if they were wrong, they were, see, he still had answers. <laughs> And so he feels trapped. He just, he said, I'm in the hands of God. I'm in his will. He said, I've never been worried about resting in the arms of Jesus, but I want answers. And you may have been there in your life before. You may have been looking for direction, especially young people tonight. In your life, you're looking for direction. You're looking for places to go. And you wonder, Lord, what am I going to do with my life? What career am I going to go into? What college am I going to go into? What relationships am I going to go into? And if you don't know the answers, if you don't know which way to go, my friend, you'll feel trapped. And don't ever... Think that the world can point you in the right direction. Because the world will always steer you the wrong way. This is a funny illustration, but it'll, 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 get to, it'll paint my, the picture of my point. A few years ago, whenever GPS systems were first coming out, TomTom, Tom, remember TomTom? Tom? Had a little square, I had a TomTom. Tom. I was so proud of that thing. Me and Cal Ray and Bob, we were headed down to Pikeville, Kentucky. You remember that, Bob? <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I know where we're going. Uh, Paintsville's where we was going. Paintsville. And I said, I- I'm just going to plug this GPS in. I'm going to plug the address in there of the church. And, and it's going to lead us right to it. I know, where- I know where it's at. But it'd just be cool to follow the directions and see which way it takes us. So we put in the fastest way. And the destination, you know, two hours or so to where we were going. So we left Bob's house. We picked him up, headed on down. Reading, writing, Route 23, right? So we was heading down 23. Bob was going back through all of his memories about the family down there. There's where they're buried. There's where this one's buried. I'm kidding, Bob. No, anyway, we was having a good old time. And the GPS told me to go this way. So I went that way. Kyrie says, boy, this don't look right. I was like, you know what? It don't either, he said, but maybe they've got something. You know, these newfangled technology, they may take us around another way I never thought about. And finally, we're, we're arriving closer and closer. We don't see a church. And all of a sudden, it says, you have arrived at your destination. <laughs> and it was somebody's house. It was a driveway in Van Wert, Kentucky. Nowhere near Paintsville, Kentucky. Thank God we left plenty early and we made, a, we made a backtrack, got to the church and said, hey, we tried this awesome tom-tom and it led us the wrong direction. And the pastor said, oh yeah, that's our treasurer's address. So you went to our treasurer's home. <laughs> as good as technology is, it led me the wrong way. And as good as all the directions that the world can give, my friend, there's only one place you need to place your trust in, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He will never lead you astray. Feel trapped because of direction. Then verses 10 through 15, it talks about people that are in darkness. They're trapped in darkness. And it goes actually specifically to say why they're in darkness. Because they are in rebellion to God. And because of their sin, they are in darkness. In fact, it paints a picture as if a man 
is trapped in bondage. They are in prison waiting to die because they feel there is no way out of their darkness. And they feel trapped because of their rebellion to God and because of their sin. And my friend tonight, you may not know the Lord is your personal savior and you may not see, see it, but you're living behind bars that you cannot see. You're in a, the prison of sin. Satan has got you bound. And you may be in a point tonight where you need to call out upon the name of the Lord. And, I, and I've changed my prayer over the past few years. I don't pray, Lord, save them. I pray, Lord, get them lost. Help them to realize they need you. It's because people are doing so well nowadays that they are broken down. And the Bible says he will save and he will hear those that are ever broken and a contrite spirit. And my friend, until you are lost and know that you are in bondage, you'll never be delivered. But I'm thankful tonight. If you're in darkness of sin, thank God he's still the light of the world. You may be trapped in darkness. You may be trapped in verses 16 through 21 because of your deeds. Your deeds. Verses 16 through 21, it says, excuse me, verse 17 rather, fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saveth them out of their distresses. What he is saying, he is saying here because of their evil deeds, they are entrapped. They are in bondage because of their own doing. And I am sick to death of people not taking responsibility for the mess that they're in. They want to blame it on their parents or grandparents that's already passed away. They want to blame it on somebody else down, the, down several years prior to them. They want to blame it on society. They want to blame it on whoever's in the Oval Office. They want to blame it on the community. They want to blame it on the church. They want to blame it on the pastor. Whenever they need to realize, look in the mirror. It's your responsibility. You got yourself in it. But thank God you can get out if you want to get out. And you're trapped because of your own deeds, amen. How many times do we warn you from this word about the direction and the temptation that Satan will lead you? Young people, we try to tell you uh, weekly and try to tell you middle aged and older ones alike, there are dangers in there, there are traps that are set by Satan, watch out for them. We, we would rather prevent you from getting into that than to get you out of jail. I'm telling you friend, listen to what the word of God says. Don't fall into that trap of your deeds that will send you to hell. Trapped because of your deeds. And then I want you to notice in verses 23 through 31, trapped because of the depths of the waters.
It's been a joy today to have you on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. We ask that you would continue to pray for us. And remember, if you'd like this month's free gift offer, contact us this week and we'll be sure to get it out to you. It's entitled, God Has a Secret. And you'll receive two messages as well as singing from the Parsons family. Be sure to contact us by way of our mailing address or on our website at calvinevans.org or toll free and the announcer will give the address and the information at the end of the broadcast. May God bless you as always until next week is our prayer. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white already to for more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.